Good morning, welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with Michelle from Terra, and uh, we're gonna do some a different kind of planting today. A very different kind of planting yeah, today. Yeah, being we're, creative with us. We're being creative and a, a little bit urban. Yeah, a little bit urban, yeah, you know? Urban. We're gonna recycle as well. I so like we've been using um, pallets. We've mm -hmm. even upgraded our name, because that is the real name of these suckers. <laughs> um, but uh, we've been uh, using these to do some of our gardens at, here at Terra. Mm -hmm. And we've been painting them, and as long as you use environmentally friendly paints, it's fine. Yes. Very simple, inexpensive way, great idea for kids, great for people who have small gardens. Yes. You can eventually turn it upright, which mm -hmm. we'll explain later. Okay. But it's so simple. You're taking a simple palette, whether it be raw or adding some color to it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna line it with some landscape fabric, staple gun. Mm -hmm. If you wanna have it stacked, you don't necessarily have to do that because you can stack the palettes in order for them to have right. solid bottoms. Sure. And then you're simply dumping your soil in and popping in your plants. Wow. And you could start with large plants, you could start with little cell packs, you could even start with seeds. Like this could be a seed planting mm -hmm. garden in, in your backyard, that, yeah. right? So it's super simple. It, you need things that are low rooting though. So it's not something that you can you do like with potatoes right. or things like that. Right. Um, it would be great um, earlier in the season, especially with seeds and stuff for lettuce. You could do a whole lettuce garden just oh. on a pallet, which would, would be amazing, really cool, right? too. It would be very pretty. Well, because you can like use so many different colors of the well, lettuce. That's the thing, too, that's what right? I'm picturing too. Yeah. I like the idea of herbs. I just love having fresh herbs and access to them. So what a fantastic idea. And it's easy to maintain, you know, you're not destroying any part of your garden. You could put it on a concrete, mm -hmm. you could put it on the side of your house as well as you're getting some sun for it. Mm -hmm. And then it's you're you're I don't know, you can enjoy every single herb there is because there's a lot of room on this. We're only doing a small portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, you want to plant them still, like Herbs can be planted a little closer together than most people think. Lettuces you want to separate because as you know, they go, kind of go they like this, thing, but yeah. herbs sort of stay within their size. Mm -hmm. So you can get them all in there. And then you can do fun things. You know, you can add markers to them or write on, write on the actual palette with chalk if you want to do that, That's which neat. we've done. Right, exactly. We're I mean, this is this simple because we have these here. Sure. So here we go. What do we got going on here? We've got our dark opal. So stick your card in there. That's yeah, just helpful to remember. To, you think sometimes you're going to remember what they are in general. Like we can recognize most of our herbs by, you know, rip off the yes. and smell or whatever. Yes. But, you know, it's good. Some for of them are harder too, though. Like parsley yeah. and cilantro are very, very mm -hmm. similar, yep. right? So you get yep. those two together and you're not sure which That's one right. is like which. That's right. Like a flat leaf right? parsley and a cilantro look yep. very similar. The other thing that you can do with some herbs, and you can do it with parsley, you can do it with basil, is instead of planting the actual whole thing like this, you can split them. Believe it or not, there is the ability, if you're just very careful, you're not destroying anything, you're splitting it in half, and there you've got two plants mm -hmm. as opposed to one, sure. especially if you're doing something smaller like this. Right, so you can kind of tuck them into small places. And exactly, like to be, exactly. So. And it now, gives them a little bit more root space as well. Well, exactly. And, and you, I love, again, it, this. Ha look how nice it actually looks, though, too. It, it, it looks great. It has a certain sort of... Uh, very rustic, but also very modern thing, kind of a look, appeal to it. And it that's does. That's what I love about it. It's, re it's and it's just very simple, right? You're not, mm -hmm. It doesn't require a lot of materials. No. It requires a little bit of time, which everyone needs when they're gardening, anyways. Mm -hmm. We have some fun with it. Get it. We have done them all low lying, and then after they have matured for a certain period of time, you can turn them upright. Okay. So, so how do you know when it's okay? You can kind of, you can tell when the plants are starting to mature themselves. Like right now, I mean, obviously we need to water all this, but you can tell that these are loosely in there. They haven't really rooted at all. Mm -hmm. you, when, you're, when your soil starts to be less loose around the top, you yep. definitely know that there's they, something they, happening in there. Yeah. They're firm in there. In there. Okay. Um, they've had, experienced some good weather. I would say, you know, give it, give it two weeks something like that okay. and then you can turn it upright. If you're going to turn it upright, make sure that you, you're leaning it for something as heavy as this because yeah. it won't Ooh. just stand oh, upright. Right? <laughs> Our smaller one here, mm -hmm. the smaller ones you definitely can hang on walls, you can lean up, you could attach to fences. So cool, um, I love that. And really simple, that's what I was referring to with like doing the chalk paint. Right. And okay. We just black paint and some chalkboard pens or, or uh, actual chalk mm -hmm. and you've got your markers on there in a different way. So how easy it is to access these pallets? You can actually purchase these pallets. We sell them mm -hmm. um, in, along with our outdoor bag products mm -hmm. in our lanes. Um, a lot of, if you're not in a vicinity where you're near the store necessarily, there's a lot of yards that just mm -hmm. want to get rid of them, like mm -hmm. scrap yards and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's also a company um, that's in, out of Toronto that's a pallet company, and yeah. they want they want you to recycle, they want you to reuse them. I think it's great that we sell so. them. Like, how, how fantastic is that? It right? is, it's I mean, super. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't expect that. So. No. And, and then, recently, of course, in the fabric as well. And the fa fabric as well. Yeah. The only thing we don't sell is 
the staple gun and the staples. There you go. So you gotta get those. But <laughs> yeah, but you you can do so many things with them. And the nice mm -hmm. thing is you could make an end table with a smaller one, like yes. you know. And we've just added casters to the bottom of these. So in fact, I can wheel this wherever I want to right you can now. Do a lot, actually. My girlfriend a made a, a, a coffee table with hers. Coffee tables so are really cool. popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, we've just seen um, sectional sofas for your patio. Yeah. You know, whitewash a pallet. You can do so many things with them. It's amazing. But so it's so cool. nice because you could integrate it. Like you mm -hmm. could actually make this longer, turn it into a piece of furniture, and have your gardens at the end of it if it was shorter, right? Oh, like, yeah. I know I have a, a wood bench at my house, and at each end is embedded as planters. And I keep thinking, I'm tearing that thing out. I want this. Sure, and I'm going to make this. it into a sofa instead. It's just something that's very, it's just so raw about this. I love it. It is. It's great. The cool thing, too, is, is you don't necessarily have to do herbs or vegetables. Mm -hmm. Do flowers. We did a yep. beautiful one in our Melton store. Painted the palette yellow. It actually has three different holes in it, so it's a little bit looser than this one. And it was done with a rainbow of animal color. Mm, so if you nice. have like low-lying things, like we've got portulaca here, mm -hmm. which is like a lower rooting item, things like marigolds, you could definitely do that because they're not going so deep in the soil. Petunias, right. things like that. You could create a that. colorful piece of art in your backyard. Wow. Or on a balcony. Let's be honest. Not everyone even has backyards anymore, no. right? They have so little spots or whatever, dwellers, right? right? Yeah. But you could easily hmm. tilt that sucker up on your patio, and you're good to go. Oh, I love that idea. As you say, but and being having the option of being able to uh, to paint them as well, and really making them your own. Mm -hmm. It's and it is just. It's one of those things, hey, you know what, if you don't like it this color anymore, you don't want to just change, change it, it, do whatever you yep. do, and just be creative with it. We've done all kinds of different colors. It's been a lot of fun. We've done some with splatter, and we've let the kids do handprints on them, and, oh, and yeah, that's a thing, right? And mm -hmm. if you, I love it. I love the idea for anybody, because I think it's a great idea, but having myself and you, having little ones, it's, mm -hmm. such, a, it's such a fun activity to yeah. do at home, to yeah. watch them watch something grow, and it's easy, because they've made it themselves. That's right. So I've got a couple of little mini ones at home and we've yarned them and planted them and Aww. done all kinds of stuff to them. Oh, so you'd be, a, it's, it's you'd be a great mom to have around with all this gardening <laughs> background. <laughs> so again, just before we go, a reminder as well, uh, you know, you want to use, when you're using edibles, make sure you use a good organic soil, right? So yes, a good organic soil, non-toxic paints, because it will seep into your soil. Sure. Um, it, it's no different than sort of plastics and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's going to get wet. So mm -hmm. just be careful with what kind of paint you choose. Mm -hmm. Use an organic soils, water, you know, your fertilizer, for, for herbs it's not as important, but no. if you're doing vegetables, definitely having a starter fertilizer and just a boost mm -hmm. later in the season. Same with flowers. They Because it's a low root system, you really want that to happen. Yes. Um, you don't want to lose so this beautiful in. look yeah. two months into your project, right? So mm -hmm. um, definitely having some fertilizer and water. Make and sure water. And water. Lots of water, especially in the heat that we get in our summer, don't yes. we? Okay, very good. Thanks. Good ideas, Michelle. I love Thank this. Thank you. Really a great idea. Make sure it's rooted. Tip it up with just a little bit and you've got art. Art. In your art in your backyard. Or your balcony. That's it for now. We'll have more tarot at home to come. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're outside at our Hamilton location of Terra, this beautiful new location of ours, and we're back with uh, Dave Machulis. You were with us last uh, week, and we were talking about uh, spending time 
outside using your outdoor space no matter how big or small it is and yeah. uh, creating basically an outdoor living room That's for right. yourself yeah. but we also want to talk about the dining experience as well because mm -hmm. a lot of people want to eat outdoors there's something very special about that particularly when we're held indoors for at least six months of the year that's right we just want to get outside yeah right well you know what it's uh opportunity is there to you know bring that indoor element out Mm -hmm. um, when we get to the dining experience of it, uh, people are wanting to have all the amenities just like they do indoors. They mm -hmm. want their outdoor uh, dining room table. They want to have the ice wells. They want to even get going with the pizza ovens or right, the exactly. outdoor kitchens. So there's lots. And, yeah, so there's a lot to experience mm -hmm. in uh, culinary fine art. Right. So when we were talking last week, if, if you missed last week's episode, we were talking about creating that space all the way around you. So making sure that you do have you're going to have some type of deck, whether it's a, a wood deck, um, a concrete, mm -hmm. um, stone. Yep. It, there's just there's all, lots of options. Plus, rugs again, of course, create that environment and kind of lock everything down. That's right. And uh, also having something around you, and particularly if you are in those neighborhoods like mine, which is very small and tight, and yep. you could have possibly five, six neighbors peeking in on your uh, private dinner. Well, if you notice too, <laughs> houses are not only taking up more of the lawn space, uh, but they're also getting built up a little bit higher yes so now decks are being designed uh, on most of the houses mm -hmm. so when you're sitting outside yeah you don't want the neighbor peering in and being creative no. with beautiful metallic uh, mm -hmm. backdrops These or even you want to get a little Zen or Japanese and get into sure. the bamboo backdrops but uh, having the screens mm -hmm. help create privacy as well mm -hmm. uh, create a little sense of enclosure or intimacy right. for your own space mm -hmm. and uh, also defines like we talked in those elements of the walls for your outdoor room right right yeah. and as you said it's so it you know it, it comes twofold really you're you are getting that great coverage and the coziness but you are getting some beautiful elements of design yes so it, it creates a better atmosphere it's come so far mm -hmm. haven't we we've come so far with design yeah. it must be fun for you because you're going in you know as a as an outdoor architectural designer and really putting together people's property their full landscapes yeah. but you must love being able to have these pieces as well to add to the final design that's right well you know what accessorizing is really important sure and I'll tell you something I, I've, I walk into this Hamilton location here and mm -hmm. I look at the store and mm -hmm. it has absolutely everything mm -hmm. that you need to furnish your outdoor living space. It does. From the furniture to the fire features to the pizza ovens mm -hmm. to the glassware. Right. I mean I love the store and mm -hmm. I love coming here so uh, yeah. a great it gives me great ideas sure. even when I'm space planning for my other clients mm -hmm. just walking in and having the experience I go aha right. that's a great idea mm -hmm. oh that would be wonderful uh, to add to the repertoire of design outdoors. Exactly that's what I think I like is because a lot of you know our, our territory stores always set up so it gives you ideas yeah. so it's not just a bunch of pillows sitting around or there's a table yeah. they create this so yes. you can see oh look at those two colors look fabulous together and I love these placemats and I love again some really nice like sort of eco-friendly tableware mm -hmm. items that you want maybe you know are safe to take outside and um, just some really cool elements and just how you can set up the space that takes it from what you've done and really just lifts yeah. it to the accessories as you say yeah right yeah, let's exactly. talk about this pizza oven how awesome is that it is so great. again dining outside is not just about sitting down and having the food here in front of you but preparing it outside as well yeah well and actually I've had the the, the luxury of actually cooking with that particular model mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually had an event and um, just the the taste of wood mm -hmm. cooked pizza <laughs> or you can actually do chicken wings in it as oh, well sure. you can use it as an oven right so it's a great uh, multi-purpose mm -hmm. so it's not just for cooking pizzas no. it's cooking roasts and if you really want that flavor of actual wood burning tasting food mm -hmm. Um, this is a great model to go with. Well, everybody wants to get out of the kitchens. We always talk about we don't want to be cooking in our kitchens anymore, particularly mm -hmm. if you have people over. You want to spend the time outdoors. So yeah. everybody get outside. Yeah. You have your barbecues. You have everything. You have your oven now. You can cook outside. That's right. But I love the way some of the elements that I have seen in design of outdoor kitchens mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Yeah, we're doing a lot now. Uh, people want full everything you might ice mm -hmm. maker and they want the uh, barbecue <laughs> wow. and the side burners you know mm -hmm. so if you're gonna cook your steak but you want the corn to go with it and you have the big pot that you can burn the, right. the boil the water on right um, people want to have the wine fridges so they can enjoy Same a nice glass of Merlot or a oh, crisp nice. Cabin Sauvignon yeah wow yeah. And, and that's the thing it's not just about just plopping a, a barbecue out there anymore no. if this is all built into this beautiful design of stone and and gorgeous countertops yeah. and well think about it whenever you have a party Mm -hmm. at your home indoors mm -hmm. where does everybody migrate to 
the kitchen. The kitchen. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense, good design sense, that on mm -hmm. a deck or on a patio uh, with your dining area, mm -hmm. that you have an outdoor kitchen extension right. and watch it. It just becomes the exact same mm -hmm. focal point of where all the conversation right. is happening. So creating, a, again, a big countertop, almost like an island in your house, stools um, yeah. where everyone can just pull up a chair right. and hang out there. I mean, that might even be it. You might not even have a table. Yeah. You might just have that. The big outdoor bar. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the big outdoor bar. Now we're talking my language. <laughs> yeah, I know. How fun. And we're in that time of year, right, where you just, you have to use your time outdoors and, right. and, and, and just go for it. Yeah. And if you're creating a space where, you know, we're talking about in the last segment as well, some of the great umbrellas that they have now. So yeah. you also need to have something, some type of coverage, something that creates an upper level as well, the top above you. Yeah. Again, coziness and also protecting from the elements. Well, yeah, you know, sun, as much as we love it, uh, mm -hmm. is also can be a little damaging on the skin. Right. So, you know, using those big uh, upright umbrellas, the ones that, you know, they weigh them down, but mm -hmm. they fold up and they can turn, you know, uh, 360 yes. degrees. Uh, Tara's got a wide selection of them here. Mm -hmm. uh, I love designing them into patio designs. Ah, okay. So it's one of the elements that we, we do a great deal. If it's an affordable way. Mm -hmm. Some people want a permanent structure like a big sure. pergola with right. retractable uh, mm -hmm. shade screens. Uh, gets a little bit more up there in cost mm -hmm. and is permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just another element of that outdoor space, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think you bring it, you know, a good point there is that a lot of people think that it's very costly to create any of these outdoor living spaces. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go, yes, top end and go top notch and, and you know, off the charts, mm -hmm. but you can do this very cost effectively yes, and it can. can just look just as nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And create a amount. We look and we see some of the cedars around us as well, obviously plant life, you know, we're here at Terra and that really was where it all started from, right? Yeah. Um, creating that plant, having that around you, people love the elements of flowers and trees and cedars create a great... They're a great um, backdrop. And yeah. they, they block a lot. Yeah. They grow well, fast. They're evergreen, so, mm -hmm. you know, they're 12 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, they act as a great backdrop for flowering plants to the foreground. Right. So if you're after that, there's a, um, a trend that I'm picking up on a lot, uh, requested a lot by mm -hmm. clients is they want to go with the tones of green mm -hmm. and then they want flowering white. So they want to see oh, the big yeah, Annabelle hydrangea or they want to yeah. see the big flowering rhododendrons mm -hmm. uh, and, and to that backdrop of the flowering plants is the evergreens, the, the cedars mm. that do it in every garden space. Yeah. And that's the great thing about, you know, with your natural landscape magazine and being able to look and see what's out there, yeah. the final product, then people can say, hey, I want a little bit of that right now, you yes. know, and I want a little bit of this. And yes. and everyone can create it again. It doesn't have to be a big property. It can be just a tiny little space and make that's it look right. awesome. Yeah. Thanks again. Always great having you on the show. Thanks All again. right, we'll have more Terra at home right after this. <laughs> Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're in our kitchen today with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra Restaurant in Hamilton. Always nice having you with us. Thank and you. we're actually making something very fresh and summery and yep. using again all the items that are nice and local to us at this time of year. Yeah, we're going to be doing a, eventually we're going to end up making a cucumber salad. Mm. Um, but we're going to do it slightly different than probably what you're, you're used to seeing. Okay. Um, but today I thought we'd cover a bunch of things regarding knives because I get yes. a lot of questions about knives. Mm -hmm. Um, and my biggest advice to anybody when you're buying a knife is to spend the money on good quality knives. Right. Um, you know, we have a saying in our business that you don't get cut by a sharp knife, you get cut by a dull knife. Okay. You, and that, and it is true because mm -hmm. when you have yeah. an expectation that your knife is going to do something and it doesn't do it or it catches the board, right. that's normally when an accident happens in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep your knives nice and sharp, well maintained, and it's really, really simple stuff. 
It mm -hmm. is really simple stuff. So I brought along my knives from my house and I'll show you what the main knives you would probably need are. Okay. And this is an important season for it too because you are going to be cutting up lots of vegetables and fruits and that. So you want to be familiar with your knives and know how to treat them well so yeah. that they'll treat you well. Exactly. <laughs> Less accidents. Less accidents. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to like Trident Grand Prix. That's the brand that I like, mm -hmm. okay? But there's, there's a lot of different brands out there that are very good and very um, good quality. Uh, what you're looking for is a good quality steel. And then the other thing is, is the weight of the knife, the, the way it feels in your hand, because everybody's hands are slightly different. Right. So I tend to go with a knife that's a little bit thicker. Um, you know, there's other brands out there like Global and stuff that are all mm -hmm. stainless steel. I find them a little bit too thin in my hands, so that's why I, don't, I just don't use okay. them, because you are going to use them, and if you're uncomfortable with them, that's, again, when accidents happen. Right, because so it is a tool. It is a tool, right? and it's a sharp one. It's a sharp <laughs> <laughs> so what we have here, you have your chef knife, okay? This is your standard. This is a 12 inch chef knife, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this is about 10 years old, this knife, uh -huh. all right? Um, it will last, and I use my knives, I mean, more than the average person exactly, would use. Exactly, you would, right. Um, and all it takes, I sharpen them about once every year or so, and then after that, every time I use it, I always use the steel. Every time. Every time you go to use a knife, you should use your steel. Mm -hmm. And it's a simple process. Now, I su suggest to people that if you're not used to sharpening a knife, mm -hmm. put the steel facing downward on a cutting board. You're at a 45 degree angle, one side and then the other, okay? That way, if it does slip, it hits the board, it doesn't hit your hand. Good. Okay? <laughs> the other way is obviously the way you see most chefs, butchers and stuff like that do it, is which is towards themselves. I but can we see are, that Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do this quite a bit. And all it takes is a few, you know, maybe 10, 15 strokes on each side. And what you've done is you've taken the steel and you've just straightened it out because it does slightly get um, out of skew. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. So we have a chef knife. You have your serrated knife or bread knife. Now what's nice about the serrated and bread knife, these are fantastic for chopping tomatoes, okay? So what you wanna do, if you're dicing a tomato, is use your bread knife first to go through it, mm -hmm. and then use your knife, your chopping oh, knife, to, to okay. chop it, okay? okay. As Good opposed tip. to trying to do it with this yes. knife, because then you're holding it and it does tend right. to squish a little bit, okay? okay. The serrated really grabs right it will. on. We have a filleting knife. Now what's nice about a filleting knife is mm -hmm. you do a lot of fish, extremely flexible oh, yeah. okay so you can put a fillet down you can bend that knife and sharp and you through. just slide it across it peels the skin right off okay, okay? Mm -hmm. and these all get sharp in the same way even the serrated knife even from the time serrated knife. even the serrated knife from time to time that was gonna be my now question. this one I don't do at 45 I'll do right. it at a little bit less of an angle right. and you just because you don't want it to run across where it's no. bumping okay um, hmm. but you do want to straighten it out a little bit okay oh that's awesome okay that was and it does sharp great we have our paring knife for all those little tiny jobs that you want to do. You mm -hmm. know, you want to cut this nice and small. Okay. Yep. Paring knives, great for food, uh, for fruit, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Worst thing you can do is take your knife. I've seen it happen where people, you know, have a loose screw in the kitchen. They take the knife and they use oh. that as a screwdriver. No, don't. Don't be doing Spend that. Spend the money on knives. Right. Get a good quality set. Don't use them as <laughs> And treat them well, tool. and, and, treat and them don't well. put them in the dishwasher either, right? You do not put them in the dishwasher. Okay. The pressure of a dishwasher is too much, and it actually makes the knife go dull, oh. okay? Okay. So you want to wash them by hand, and you just mm -hmm. want to store them properly. I use a wooden block all the time. Some mm -hmm. people have magnetic strips in their kitchen, and yes. they just put them up. I don't put them up on, on a magnetic strip, just in case you're going by with your hand. Right. I mean, the points are out, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. So with a chopping knife, mm -hmm. And if you're doing a small job like this, where you have, you know, we have shallots here and you're, you want to dice it or mince it or something like that, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to take out the big knife. No. Okay? It's a little bit too big. It's a little bit <laughs> awkward like to cut with. It's a giant. It yeah. is. Okay. And you have to be very, very good with a knife if you do want to use that. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're just going to cut it across like this and then keep your fingers point, pointed downward. Okay? So if the knife does jump, it hits a knuckle. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to go across and you're letting the knife do the work. I keep the okay. point on top of the board, mm -hmm. and away we go. And that's one a, a mistake a lot of people make is they'll pick up the knife and they just they, they just do. do chop, chop, chop yeah, like that, they right? Do but like you this. can keep that engaged onto the, that's right. the board, right? Yeah, keep the point down and let, it's more of a rocking motion. Right. And like I said, if the knife is sharp, it'll go through anything. 
mm -hmm. without a lot of pressure. Well, since we had a conversation way back when on the show about knives, I, I've been sharpening. I, I wasn't. I'm not doing it every time, but um, but again, I'm not using my knives the same way you are as or as often. But I'm finding it is way better. I mean, I still yeah. I still cut myself. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, I have my kitchen wounds just because I'm not being safe. But really, it does help absolutely to have a sharp knife. I've really learned that because it does. It, it, it grabs the food and it does what it's supposed to do instead of slipping all over the place and that's how you get your accidents. And, and that's exactly it. Yeah. Accidents don't happen. When you know what the knife is supposed to do, it'll do it. Right. So then this is what we do. We've got mm -hmm. our serrated where we cut. Now we're going to dice those tomatoes. Okay. All right. Serrated knife also works really well on mm -hmm. melon fruit. So okay. You oh, can, yes. You can use this, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you get a watermelon and you're trying to get through it, be Danger. very careful with this. Yes. Use a serrated knife. Give Great it a little idea. seesaw. It goes Great right idea. Through. I actually sometimes I love watermelon so much I could eat it every day, but I actually tr I, I buy it chopped up for me already because <laughs> I don't want to have to do it. But I'm going to use a serrated knife. It's a good exactly. idea. Exactly. Do that, and yeah. then you use this. All and right. Get the skin off. Oh. There you go. Very. Oh, you're so smart. You're so handy to have around, Mark. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and do some more here. <laughs> Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. The Hamilton Spectator. At work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. We're in our kitchen with Chef Mark, and uh, so we had our discussion about our knives. We were yeah. able to chop up all this, uh, these wonderful vegetables and uh, continue on with our, sure. our cool cucumber recipe we have. Yeah, so what I did is finish cutting those tomatoes and those shallots. Now I have a little bit of white vinegar. I put in some kosher salt, mm -hmm. some black pepper, a little bit of olive oil. If you can grab me some of that fresh oregano sure. there. I'm just gonna mix this up. And what I did is I took some field cucumbers. Now, you can use English cucumbers, but field cucumbers are a little bit wider, a little right. fatter, so they a little bit easier to deal with. Boat. <laughs> yeah, so I hollowed them out, took the seeds out of them, and we're gonna use that as our delivery for the salad. It's nice, it's, again, it's, it's different, right? It's just it's, different, it's... yep. Straight up cucumber salad, which is always great at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Just a different way of doing it. We'll throw in some oregano. Sounds good. And then we're gonna spoon this in. So just a reminder, you can find this recipe on our website at terragreenhouses.com. Oh, the oregano smells so good. It's good. It's nice and fresh. And that's, so it's just white vinegar just with white vinegar. olive oil and salt olive and pepper. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, Fill these great. up. So colorful. And then what we're going to do is we'll throw this. Fill this one up a little bit more here. Looks so good. There we go. And yeah, we'll throw it onto the plate and I'll get some feta cheese. That just uh, takes it up another notch too. <laughs> there you go. And this will add a little bit of that salt as well. Right. It gives us a nice color. What a great idea. And again, this time of year, we're always looking for different ideas for serving vegetables. So yeah. um, we're, we're giving you lots of them and yeah. a lot of uh, barbecuing going on and make it fresh and spend some time outdoors and not too much time in the kitchen. Exactly, exactly. We'll take this end of this green onion here and slice it up. Oh, you're being fancy now. Thanks, Chef Mark. There you go. That looks good. Very nice. All right, that's it. Maybe you could try this this weekend. Have a good one.